there again. I wanted to talk about the Cessna 182. Again, the high wing airplane. We have the low wing ones. Just kind of some basic overviews here. Today I want to talk about the fuel system because they have to work on it with the AMP airframe and power plant mechanic today. And I thought maybe I could show you the fuel systems. So I'm going to start from the source to the engine. And so of course the fuel tanks are where the source is. Those are in the wings here. And they feed down through the sides here and into the engine area. I also want to show you where we can actually uh, test the fuel quality because water can get into it. I'll show you the fuel sums. I'm actually replacing two of those that are in the wing for this older model Cessna. And then there's one that's beneath, underneath the engine. I'm going to show you that as well. The gaskets have gone bad on that, so that will get repaired today as well as something called the fuel selector valve, which then can turn off of your, uh, can select tanks, as well as turn off your fuel, uh, and the gaskets have gone bad on that. So that has to be pulled out today as well. We've drained all the fuel from this airplane um, in order to do that, just by the way. Now let me just show you the diagram. All right, so this is the diagram of the fuel system, and you can see the tanks in the upper part and then it drains through the cabin, down through the sides here. And then the fuel selector valve is right where my thumb is. And that then goes down to the, the uh, gas escalator or the fuel strainer. That also gets clean. There's a lever that I can pull to get out any impurities like water. That, the gasket system on that has gone bad, as well as the gasket system on this. This is a 1972 airplane. And my guess is that it may be even the original fuel selector gaskets. Okay, so here we have our fuel strainer again, and then our car box allows air into. There's different kinds of cabling that's connected, the throttle cable, something called carb heat that allows heated air to come in in case there's icing in your carburetor. The carburetor is upside down compared to, let's say, a car. But it's very simple. It just has a cable that opens it up and allows fuel to come in. So that's the final destination for our fuel. Okay, so in the Cessna 182, here's our carb heat on the left, and that opens up to allow outside air, and that was connected again to the carburetor system in the engine. This is our throttle. You push it forward to make it go faster, the propeller faster, and pull it back. Then to the right of that is the propeller. Some airplanes like this one have a variable pitch prop. So that has nothing to do with the fuel. But over here, the red one, that definitely has to do with the fuel mixture. So the higher up you are in altitude, the thinner the air is, so you need less fuel. So that ratio is the same. So we actually have to lean the engine with this lever here. To kill the engine, you don't want to pull it back too far because that will then starve it completely of fuel. And that's, in fact, how we turn off the airplane. Then we'll turn off the ignition system and the power. This is the first place we go. Okay, so we've taken apart the insides of this. The furniture's out where I'm sitting. Again, these are your foot pedals over here to steer the rudder and your brakes on the top. Right in the middle here is where the fuel selector valve would go. We've taken off this pedestal, but the, the actual controls part of it is here where you can turn either left tank or right tank or turn it off, which would be completely back. You do that in case of emergency or you have fuel leaking below. Let me just show you where that linkage is. So this is the linkage that goes down lower. Goes down into here and this is the actual fuel selector valve. Right in there. We'll get it in focus. There it is. So you can see the actual fuel line coming in there on the left. There's also one on the right that's a little buried underneath the cabling over in here. So we have to dig that out today again with a certified mechanic and then replace the O-rings and any other kinds of uh, you know, rubber that's gone bad over the years because it does leak. It doesn't completely turn off the uh, fuel. It does work as a left-right left tank. Again, gravity fed goes out there to the carb carburetor. And that gives you an idea of the fuel system for now. And here's the inside. All right, this is the fuel strainer. This will be rebuilt today. There's a lever in the engine cavity that uh, you pull it and then fuel comes out through this 
tube right here. It actually unfortunately goes on the ground. You can't collect it if you want. Okay, so we are done with the fuel selector valve. We're done with the fuel strainer. And as you can see behind me here, I've got the cowling on both sides, the top part and the bottom part. And I've just flown it to uh, test it. No leaks on uh, the uh, fuel strainer. And uh, let me just show you where we actually sump the uh, fuel. And then the last step we do is the log bix. So I'll sh take a picture of that and then we'll finish this discussion on the fuel system for a Cessna 182. Here we are at the root of the wing on the Cessna 182 and these are where you get your fuel samples. For the older ones you just have a couple of them on the uh, beneath the tanks right here on each side of the wings. These are brand new just to make sure that they uh, don't leak. So here are our log books here. We have an engine log book for an airplane as well as an airframe log book. The fuel work was done in this logbook, the airframe one, and then for the oil change we would do it in here. This is something owner can do, and then for the airframe that would be a certified mechanic. Okay, so we've got our furniture back in, the plane is back to being 100%, our fuel system's working great, it's not leaking, and we have a safe airplane to go fly for our next adventure.